With this short video, we would like to show you how you can use Seesaw for evolving a fragment into an underutilized sub pocket of an active site, how you can use it for compound ideation and compound prioritization. And we would like to orient ourselves by using an example that was published by Takeda, fragment-based discovery of a small molecule inhibitor of Bruton's tyrosine kinase. They wanted to come up with a um, approved version of an inhibitor because the most prominent one, ibrutinib, is quite large and is also binding covalently against the protein. So Takeda did a fragment screen by Caliper Mobility Shift assay and they came up with a promising fragment hit number two here, which uh, binding profile looked quite promising. Potency was 3.5 micromolar and the compound was also quite selective. On the right hand side here is shown how the fragment is situated against the hinge region of the protein and we can also see that this underutilized sub pocket can be used for a fragment evolution where the evolving parts are situated against the p-loop. Below here is a table with some of the compounds that Takeda developed and we can see here again the fragment number two and the vector which they grew or of which they grew. The first compound number seven here an N-methylpyrazole and compound number eight methylpyridine had comparable potency unfortunately only of compound number eight, we have a crystal structure. There's no crystal structure for compound number seven, but we can easily look at this in Seesaw now and modify this methylpyridine into the pyrazole and the other variants that Takeda came up with. So let us start out by loading the crystal structure of the fragment hit they obtained. And we can see that the protein is loaded and is shown in its cartoon structure, which we can see here. We can also see where the fragment is situated inside the protein. And we can identify this p-loop that we saw earlier in the paper. On the left-hand side, we have a table which contains the small molecules that are co-crystallized with the protein. When we hover over a table entry, we can see which of the compounds we have here. We can see it in 2D and we have its estimated affinity, which corresponds very nicely with the potency. If we remember from the paper, the potency was 3.5 micromolar. So now when we click on this, we get a more detailed view of this fragment hit. We can see here how it's binding against the hinge region and we can also see how the pocket here can be used to grow this fragment of this vector and use this pocket for the additions to the fragment. When we zoom out a little bit we can see the p-loop as well of the cartoon view here. So in order to start modifying, we load the compound number eight, which was also co-crystallized. Uh, 4ZLZ is the PDB code. And also this is shown in its 3D structure. We can see the methylpyridine ring here. We can identify the p-loop. The estimated affinity is obviously a little bit better. If we remember the potency of this compound was around 100 nanomolar. So that corresponds very nicely. And we can now modify this compound. Let's 
remove this a little bit, zoom in, we can see that it's the same view, obviously, as in the paper, because it's the crystal structure, we can identify this hydrogen bond mediating water molecule with a bifurcated hydrogen bond against the backbone of the protein and binding towards the nitrogen of the pyridine. The same is true for this view that we have here. Here's the methylpyridine, the, the water molecule hydrogen bonding to the backbone of the protein. So since we don't have a crystal structure of this compound number seven, let's now start to modify this and create it ourselves by editing this compound number eight. The first thing we do is remove this methyl group and we open up the ring. We form a bond between the nitrogen and the carbon. We make this a nitrogen by simply typing N on the keyboard and we add a methyl group to the N. Leave the editor and get a more detailed view about the binding situation. Now what the software is doing now, it's optimizing this compound so that we get the optimal geometries for the hydrogen bond, which are important. What the software does is it, contrib it calculates the contributions of each atom or group to the overall affinity. And it categorizes good contributions by the color green. And obviously the size of this corona is corresponding directly with how much this atom or group is contributing and into the color red, which means there's a penalty. This is only a small penalty. And here we have a small contribution of this hydrogen bond. We can label this to analyze it further. So this nitrogen has a dehydration penalty of 7.2. The receptor has a dehydration penalty of 8.6, but both of these are overcompensated by the hydrogen bond energy uh, of the hydrogen bond that is formed between this water molecule and the nitrogen. So the next thing that Takeda wanted to do was remove this conserved water molecule by extending the ring into the pocket. And this is what we will do as well. So we will start out by Again, editing compound number eight, we'll remove this methyl group, make this a carbon, and then generate a five ring. You can see how easy that is. Make this a double bond and this an indole ring. So while we wait, let's look at what this indole ring does to the potency here, compound number nine. We see that there's a sharp drop in potency from 100 to 850 nanomolar. And the same thing happens with the affinity here. Uh, there's a sharp drop in affinity, basically also having a dramatic effect on the LLE and the LE, and we can explain why this compound is having such a hard time with the affinity because there are three penalties on these carbons here. Again, we can start to analyze. We make a label on this carbon and we can see that there's almost seven kilojoules penalty which come from the receptor only. And we can visualize this by clicking on the eye. And we can see that it is these two nitrogen atoms here that are not involved in any hydrogen bond. And this is responsible for this penalty of 8.8 .8 kilojoules per mole. Likewise, for this carbon here, there is a penalty of 7.3, which comes from this carbonyl oxygen here 
It's not involved in a hydrogen bond and therefore has to pay a dehydration penalty of 7.3. So the next thing that Takeda did was modify the indole ring into an indazole ring, which brought them a boost in potency. Let's see how we can do this here. Simply type N on the keyboard and then leave the editor again and calculate. So again, this compound is optimized and then scored based on its affinity. And we can see that just as with the potency, we have a sharp increase in estimated affinity in the nanomolar regime because now we have no penalties anymore, but we have two wonderful hydrogen bonds against the backbone of the protein. We can look at them. Here we have obviously for both the protein and the ligand a dehydration penalty, but this penalty is overcompensated by the interaction energy, by the hydrogen bond energy between these two atoms. And the same holds true for this nitrogen here. Um, both have a resulting gain in affinity of minus 3.1 and minus 2.9 kilojoules per mole, respectively. So the last thing that Takeda did was they introduced the methyl group in the ortho position here. And when we look at the surface, we can see that there is also an underutilized smaller sub pocket here which is directly in the extension direction of this vector. But more importantly, we can also visualize this with CESA is that there is a, an unfavorable torsion between those two rings. With CESA, you can classify your torsions into three categories that are color coded by red for almost never to be observed in high quality small molecule crystal structures. Yellow is observed occasionally and green means it's very abundant in high quality small molecule crystal structures. So this is an unusual torsion here. And let's see what happens when we modify this uh, compound and add this methyl group. We can see that immediately the torsion changes to a more abundant, a widely abundant torsion in high quality small molecule crystal structures. So there we have it. We can quite nicely recapitulate the story that Takeda published here from compound seven, actually starting from fragment screen number two over compound seven and eight um, to nine, where we had this sharp drop in potency, then an increase again by modifying the indole to an indazole ring and then having a, a, another small gain in potency by adding this methyl group. And exactly this is what we see with CESA here. This is compound number eight, having uh, a good affinity. Uh, compound number seven, a little bit worse, but comparable. Um, and then we had the sharp drop in affinity when we extended the ring system to the indole ring and then Again, the gain and affinity with the indazole ring and adding the methyl group. And in addition to that, other important properties for these compounds can be monitored because of the uh, of some of the star drop um, admetox properties that we have incorporated from our friends at Optibrium. For example, you can monitor the Herg value, the log P value, and other important, um, for example, SIP450, blood-brain barrier category, uh, and other important properties here. So as an example, I would like to give these two, Herg and log P, have very nicely improved from 3.5 to 2.8, and the log P has improved from 2.4 to 